This is problem number one in sample test number four. A uniform semicircular sign, one meter in diameter, is supported by two wires as shown. If the mass of the sign is five kilograms, what is the tension in each of the wires? First thing we want to do for something like this is to make a free body diagram. So we know that this sign has weight, and its weight would be right in the middle of the sign, somewhere along this line as a symmetric, uh, both to the right and to the left. So somewhere along that line is its center of mass. We don't know how far down. We won't have to know. But we know that the weight of the sign is mg. And that's going to be equal to 5 times 9.8 or 49 newtons. And then there's two other forces acting on the sign. There's the tension force right along the cord over here going up, call it T1. And then there's another tension force, T2, along this other cord going up. So we just have those three forces acting on the sign. And we do have force equilibrium. So one thing you could say is the summation of all the forces in the y direction should be zero. That's going to be T1 plus T2, which is going up, minus the weight that's going down. So it's true that the weight is equal to tension 1 plus tension 2, or in other words, 49 newtons equals T1 plus T2. Nice to know. We also can set up a torque diagram. If we select one of these tension points as being our axis of rotation, say this one, let's call it point A, then the fact that T1's line of action goes through that point means there's no torque due to that force, and we need to only concern ourselves with the other two forces. We have T2, which has a moment arm of 0.6 meters away, and we have this weight force, which has a moment arm of 0.5 meters away. So even though it's skewed down, we, we want to take the line of action of this force, which is vertical right here, and the shortest distance to that line of action is this distance right here, which is indeed 0.5 meters, halfway to the center of the sign. So that's how we need to concern ourselves, so we don't have to worry about the fact that it's skewed down into the sign. So we're going to calculate the summation of the torques about point A. That should be equal to zero. And we do have a positive torque due to this T2 going, trying to go counterclockwise here. By the right hand rule, if you curl your right hand fingers in the direction of that counterclockwise, then your thumb points in the direction of the positive z, which makes it a positive torque. And that's going to be 0 0.6 moment arm times T2. Then we have a negative torque due to the weight force going this way. And again, right hand rule would have your thumb pointing into the page, which is a negative z. And that's going to be minus the moment arm times the weight force. Solving for T2, we would have T2 is equal to 0.5 divided by 0.6 times the weight, which would be 5, 6 times 49, which is equal to 40.8 newtons. For T1, we can uh, use this equation up here. T1 is going to equal 49 minus T2. So that's going to be 49 minus 40.8, which would be 8.2 newtons. So those are our two tension forces, 40.8 and 8.2. We could find this second tension force by using torque equilibrium from point B, say, let me do point, point B here, and uh, that would look like this. Here's point B, here's tension 1, with a moment arm of 0.6 meters. Weight force only has a moment arm of 0.1 meters. The weight force is trying to make this go uh, counterclockwise, which would be a positive torque around point B. Tension 1 is trying to make this go clockwise, which would be a negative torque about point B. So as we were to do that, 
we would say the summation of all the torques about B is equal to zero and we would have that uh, 0.1 times the weight minus 0.6 times tension 1 is equal to zero for no net torque. So tension 1 is going to equal 0.1 divided by 0.6 times the weight, 1 6 times 49, which is indeed 8.2 newtons. So that would be a different way that we could determine the second tension force of 8.2 newtons.